Welcome to the tutorial creating a basic morphing sequence. So I'm going to take you from start to finish through the process of creating a really simple morphing sequence. So let's begin by going to the timeline and creating a new layer. And by renaming that layer morphing by selecting the first frame. Then let's go to the shape tools and select a rectangle and in the tool properties panel let's select the auto fill button and then from the color palette let's unlink the brush pencil and fill uh, swatches here so that you can select them independently so for the stroke I'm going to select black and for the fill let's keep it as blue so then if I draw a rectangle it should automatically fill uh, with my fill color um, and I should receive a black outline just like I've chosen here uh, for the pencil swatch. Then if we go to the second frame, so our destination drawing, and we switch tools to the ellipse tool, and we once again select the autofill button, we can create a circle that has the exact same fill and outline color and in this case also the same width uh, for the contour. Then there are several ways that you can create a morphing sequence between your source drawing and your destination drawing. Um, you can select any of the cells in between these two drawings. You can right click and select morphing, create morphing, or you could go to the top menu and select animation, morphing, create morphing, or you can click on this button here in the timeline view which also creates morphing sequences. And you'll know that a morphing sequence has been created by these sort of arrows or chevrons that you see going across uh, between the source drawing and the destination drawing. And then if you use um, the playhead to scroll back and forth you can see the transformation or you can also use the keyboard shortcuts um, period to go forward or comma to go backwards. If you'd like to scroll between the source drawing and the destination drawing, you can use the keyboard shortcuts uh, G to move forward or F to move backwards to toggle between the two. Then if you want to delete the morphing sequence, you have to select a region again between the source drawing and the destination drawing. And you can right click and select morphing, delete morphing, or you can go to the top menu once again and select animation morphing, delete morphing. And one reason that you might want to delete a morphing sequence um, is to start from scratch again. So let's reinstate the morphing again. So the morphing tool, um, which is this tool right here, let's click on it, has its own set of properties in the tool properties panel. You can see them right here. So let's take a look at all of the morphing tools tool properties. So the first thing I'd like to talk to you about are hints, and we haven't gotten into hints yet because up until now we've only tried morphing a relatively simple shape. But when you start morphing more complex shapes, say a flag or the inside of a character's mouth that has multiple colors and really changes form, what you can do is you can suggest certain points in the source drawing that should morph into certain points in the destination drawing um, to the software so it knows in which direction it should morph the shape. Um, and I'm going to click on this button here which is the suggest hints button so you can see what the hints look like. So if we go to the first drawing, oh it looks like the source drawing wasn't really clicked. So now if I click on it, you can see that there's a zero in the first corner with a little green point and a one here with a green point. Um, and then if we go to the destination drawing, beside the zero there's a red point and beside the one there's a red point as well. You can actually move these to places that you think would better aid the morphing process. So I don't think it's going to change much in this case because it's a pretty straightforward morph from a rectangle to a circle, but you get the point um, of the function of hints. So in the first drop down you can select uh, between the different hint types, but I'll get into those more in one of the next tutorials. The second button is actually to hide the hints, and that's because um, with this relatively simple shape, we only see two hint points, but as I mentioned before, with a very complex shape, there could be 
a lot of hint points and it's very messy to look at. So sometimes you need to toggle between seeing them and not seeing them so you can really see your object. So this third button, which only exists in Animate Pro, the Show Morphing Layer in Place, we're not going to get into because this has to do with this section here, which deals with morphing layers. We're not going to get into morphing layers in any of the video tutorials, um, but you can learn more about them by referring to the Animate Pro user guide. The next button under the current morphing section is the toggle button. So it's like using this keyboard shortcuts F and G to toggle between uh, the source drawing and the destination drawing. Um, when you're using hint points, this is very helpful so that you can bypass all of the morphed area and you can just see the two, what we would say maybe like keyframe drawings, the two main drawings. Um, this is the button that I pressed to suggest hint points, as you saw earlier. Um, the flatten button in this case is used for fills that are transparent or semi-transparent. So when you flatten them, it makes it easier uh, for the software to morph the object. So the quality is good to increase when you're doing a close-up shot because then you can really see any roughness that might exist in the line quality. So like I said, we're going to skip this section here about morphing layers, but we are going to talk about the ease here at the bottom. So easing in and easing out is something we've talked about before. Um, it gives your animation a very natural, unmechanical, uh, a more lively or lifelike feel. So the two values that you can toggle between for ease in and ease out values is 1 to minus 1. Um, so you can, you know, change those values just by entering them in. You can have a decimal value, I believe, as well. So like 0 0.5. Um, and it's actually really helpful here because you have a little diagram of the curve that you're creating. So if you know your shapes well for your easing in and easing out, you can create the graph that you're you're looking for. And then lastly, at the bottom here, we have the timing. Um, and right now it's disabled, but this actually has to do with the vanishing point. So as you saw up here, the vanishing point hint that either vanishes or appears actually, but it's the same thing. The only difference is whether the object is vanishing from the source layer to the destination layer or whether it's appearing from the source layer to the destination layer. But in both cases, because the object disappears, often the vanishing point disappears. And if you don't want that to happen, um, you can enable this and then put in the number of the frame you would like to see the points um, remain up until. So if you want to see those points right until the end, you would put in 20 because your morphing sequence in this case goes up to frame 20. So that's it for the tutorial creating a basic morphing sequence. Stay tuned for the next tutorial adjusting the velocity and timing.